Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to the channel. In this, the second video in our Home Assistant series for absolute beginners, we're going to be adding the UK Met Office integration into our Home Assistant system. If, like me, you've recently installed Home Assistant, you'll have noticed that the default weather forecast information is provided by the Norwegian Meteorological Institute, or, to mangle it in my best attempt at Norwegian, Meteorologisk Institute. And whilst I have absolutely nothing against the Norwegians, or their weather forecasts, I'd much prefer to have the UK Met Office telling me when it's going to be rainy again. Before we jump in, if you're unsure what Home Assistant is all about, and are looking for an easy step-by-step -step introduction and guide to installing it on a Raspberry Pi, please do consider taking a look at this video first. As I'm still finding my way around Home Assistant, this video goes step by step through the process of adding the UK Met Office integration. We'll start off by seeing how to register with the Met Office to get a data point API key, and then add the Met Office integration into Home Assistant itself, before finally adding the forecast data into one of our dashboards. However, I can't promise that your weather will turn out any better at the end of this. A great point to get started is the Home Assistant web page from Met Office Integration. This tells us that the Met Office weather data can be accessed via the Data Point API. If you're unfamiliar with what API stands for, Application Programming Interface, think of it as a way for two or more computer programs or pieces of software to communicate with each other. And in our context, it provides a means for Home Assistant to communicate with the Met Office systems to access various items of weather forecast data. Having said all of that, we don't need to get too bogged down in the technicalities. All we need to do is obtain an API key, which we'll then use when we add the Metas integration into Home Assistant. After that, we'll never need to reference the API key again. At this point, you could follow the Getting Started link, whereupon you'll be directed to a couple of pages giving information about the registration process and the Met Office's data point system. But I'd recommend you just jump straight to the registration page by clicking on the Met Office account link in step one. On the assumption you don't already have a Met Office account, select new account, which will immediately take you to the data point registration page. Fill in all the required information and then for the registration type, select personal registration and for customer survey, select personal interest. Finally, for access to paid services, select no and then scroll down through all the usual guff to select the terms and conditions checkbox before you then click on register. At this point, you should get the registration successful dialog and receive an email to the address you entered with instructions on how to log in. Log into the Met Office system using the username and password you defined during the registration process. Then select account details in my account, whereupon you should find your API key towards the bottom of the page, as shown here. Copy the API key and save it somewhere handy. I tend to use Windows Notepad for such things, as you'll need this when you come to add the Met Office integration into Home Assistant. And that's it. You're done with the Met Office stuff, so you can now log out and return to Home Assistant. OK then, from our YouTube Demos dashboard, the first thing we can see is that the current weather forecast data is provided by the Norwegian Meteorological Institute, as mentioned earlier. So let's now add in the Met Office integration by selecting Settings, then Devices and Services, and Add Integration. We'll search for the required integration by typing MET and then select MET Office. Now we need to enter the API key that we obtained earlier. Just paste it into the uppermost field and then select Submit, at which point we can see the MET Office integration has been added. Assign it to an area, in this case Home, select Finish and we're done. Taking a quick look at the YouTube Demos dashboard, we see that there's been no visible change. The weather forecast card is still the same one provided by the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. If however we go to the overview dashboard, we see there are now three new cards related to the UK Met Office. 
but that's to be expected as Home Assistant is still managing that dashboard. Let's then go back to the YouTube Demos dashboard, enter edit mode and start to add in the data sources for the UK Met Office. We're again going to do this by adding the individual entities rather than selecting from one of the library of card designs. As an aside, we'll start to do a bit more with card views etc in the next video, but for now we can just select the various Met Office entities, seven in all, check there are no others elsewhere in the list and then select continue. Home Assistant has created a suggested card layout for us, which for now will do just fine. So we can select Add to Dashboard, whereupon we've now got our UK Met Office forecast card. Before we exit Edit Mode, let's delete the Norwegian Meteorological Institute card. After all, there's only so much weather you can take, even for us Brits. OK, time for a little bit of faffing around to improve the layout of the card. Obviously, we can chop and change to our heart's content what information is presented and in what order, etc. But for the purposes of this video, I'll just make a couple of small revisions. First, we'll promote the card up one level so the dashboard appears a little less cluttered. And then edit the card to add a title before selecting Save to exit back out. I'm still not happy though because there's not a lot of visual difference between the three hourly and daily forecast panes. So let's edit the card a little bit more by switching to the second pane within the card, i.e. the one for the three hourly forecast, and change from showing only the current weather to showing current weather and forecast. We can now see how the weather is forecast to change throughout the day at three hour time periods. And for now, that's good enough for this weather aficionado. So we'll hit save and then exit from the dashboard edit mode. And there we are, we've added in the UK Met Office integration into our Home Assistant setup, removed the old Norwegian Meteorological Institute card from our dashboard and added in a newly configured card set up to our preference. Clearly, there's a lot more that we can do in terms of overall dashboard and card design, but that'll probably be the subject for a future video. For now, We've no excuse for not knowing when the cricket's going to be rained off. Before we finish, I thought I might give you a quick sneak preview of what's coming up in the next video in this series. As the starting point for developing my home energy monitoring dashboard, I've purchased a couple of these local byte smart plugs with inbuilt power monitoring capabilities. The first task will be to set these up in my home network and then we'll integrate them into Home Assistant as a precursor to adding them into the energy dashboard. That way we can monitor and track the power consumed by whichever devices are plugged into them. The integration into Home Assistant is significantly more involved than anything we've done in this series so far. So if you're up for a challenge and want to hear more about terms such as TASMOTA, MQTT and Mosquito Brokers, then please do consider subscribing. Even if you've not yet taken a step into Home Assistant, hopefully you'll still find it of some interest. OK, well that'll do for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up as it really does help. One last thing. Here's a little extra for those who watched the first video in this series where we integrated a Govi H5075 Smart Thermal Hygrometer. As there wasn't a huge amount of log data at the time I made the video, here's a quick snippet that better illustrates the logging and graphing capability and limitations within Home Assistant. Having clicked on the temperature data source, we're presented with a small graph showing the previous 24 hours readings. Drilling down into this, we can then specify the start and end dates, and in this example, choose to display the last 14 days worth of temperature data. Note that for a period of about five days, the trace just flatlines. This corresponds to me having switched off the Raspberry Pi. So although the Govi device has actually logged this data internally within its own memory, the Home Assistant integration cannot pull it back. For that, you need to resort to the Govi mobile app itself. Anyway, 
In addition to the temperature trace, we can also choose to add another data source to the chart, in this case humidity, which nicely illustrates that when the temperature rises, the humidity decreases, and vice versa. Well, at least it does in my porch. And that really is it for this one. Hope to see you again next time, but until then, cheers.